Father in heaven, we're grateful to serve in this capacity as a town council and to hear the issues that are before our wonderful town at this time. We ask for thy inspiration to make decisions that are wise and benefit the citizens of this great area. We ask and say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we'll go ahead and call our meeting to order. We have, uh, today we have a delegation from uh, ATCO, oh yes, thank you. Let's, uh, there are no additions to the agenda as provided, so. I would like to put an addition on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, garbage contract. Garbage contract, which would fit under 7D, if there's no objections. 7D, then I'll need a motion to accept this agenda. I move to accept the agenda as amended with additions. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? No? That passes. So thank you. Uh, fabulous. So yes, we'll turn the time over to our delegation. We have with us uh, Mr. Shane Ellis and Pat Goodfellow, both from Lethbridge, is that right? right. Yeah. To talk a little bit about the uh, ATCO gas contract, the, uh, the franchise renewal. We have had a uh, contract with ATCO Gas since the 1950s. We've renewed typically on a 10-year term, and that is what this is proposing. Uh, specifically today, after the presentation, what we're going to be looking for is uh, the council's thoughts on what the rate will be moving forward. Right now we're sitting at a 15, and the proposal, I think, as we'll see, is to stay the same. So uh, we'll turn the time over to our delegation. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Yeah. Thanks for letting us come. We enjoy coming to speak to our communities. Uh, so I'm going to give a little bit of a background. Some of this you guys probably know. Uh, we don't get too often in front of town councils, so um, but feel free to stop me if you have questions. Uh, in front of you and, and sent to you are uh, some documentation. Uh, the very first page shows a comparison. I don't have that up on the, on the screen. Um, but the very first page shows us uh, some comparisons of different franchise fees and the, the revenue that would be collected from the town. Uh, with that uh, with that franchise fee, uh, so you can kind of uh, decide when you're looking at the rates that you want. The, uh, that, that binder also includes the old agreement and the proposed new agreement. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what the differences are. And then the very last part of that binder is the renewal process, more for, for, for Jeff um, to, to help guide through the, the requirements when, uh, when we renew agreement. There's some requirements to make notifications in the papers and things like that. Um, so. That, uh, that's in front of me as well. Uh, so as, uh, as uh, some of you guys probably know, it's been uh, since 1912 that we brought uh, gas to this uh, great province. Um, we have over 1.1 million customers now and, and, and serve almost 300 communities. Um, we do respond 24-7 to natural gas emergencies, which in Canada we include uh, no, no heat. So if we're without, without heat in the, in the winter time, that is an emergency in our, in our minds. So we respond to those. Um, we respond daily to service calls from customers, whether it's meter installations, we do appliance checks, uh, that type of service, and, uh, and obviously inspect our, our facilities regularly to, to ensure that they're not leaking, ensure that they are um, of integrity. We've been serving the town of Carson since 1955. Uh, I guess some of you've been to that office down there, and we have two employees currently that uh, serves the 20, the 2,650 customers. Who's that old guy, Aaron <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, He's uh, definitely retired now. Um, we also obviously serve Karsten out of Lethbridge uh, for any of the constructions. We construction crews. We have about 60 staff in Lethbridge that support the surrounding areas. And then uh, staff in, in Raymond and Fort McLeod and Crowsness Pass that also support. So the, the franchise agreement, which we're here to talk about today, is an agreement between us and the municipality that uh, gives us rights to deliver natural gas in, uh, within your community. So this includes, um, gives us the exclusive right to uh, install our pipes in, into your community. And also uh, requires us to uh, serve the customers within the Carson area. Um, it helps us when we're making the, these 10 year agreements or, or plus, helps us in, when we're making investment decisions as far as infrastructure upgrades and some assurances when we make those, uh, when we make those investments. So the current franchise agreement expires this September. Um, 
there is a clause in that agreement that it continues on while we negotiate. So nothing really changes if we don't hit that September deadline. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we'll, as we work towards renewing. There is a clause in there that uh, half of the franchise fee could be held back if, uh, if we're unsuccessful in negotiating a, a franchise agreement, but we've never done that. We've never had to cross that road. Not, not something we typically do. So the current agreement that we have is based on the uh, template developed. We negotiate with AUMA when we develop these template agreements, and the existing agreement that the town has is based on the 2003 negotiations. Since then, in 2015, we renegotiated with the AUMA and made some uh, amendments to the agreement, and that's the, that's the agreement that we're bringing uh, to you today, is that uh, amended agreement. So some of the, I'll, I'll highlight some of the changes, not, not a whole lot of changes, but I'll highlight some of them and then some of the key points in the agreement. Uh, so one of the changes is the ability to uh, pick the term for the agreement. So in the past, it's been a fixed 10-year agreement, and now Council has the ability to de determine anywhere from 10 to 20 years what they want for a term. One of the things this does is we can put the actually expiry date in the agreement to, to help uh, Jeff and the other CAOs, because currently it's based on, their old agreement expires based on when the bylaw was passed. So you have to do some digging to figure out when the agreement actually expires. So either way, if you decide to stick with 10 year, we'll pick 10, you know, we'll pick a date into the future that gives us time to do the renewal process and actually have it in the agreement. Some communities have done 15. Um, haven't signed a 20 year yet, I guess, but uh, whatever the council is comfortable with. So what is the, the, what does granting the franchise do? So it gives us, as I said, exclu that exclusive right to install pipe in, in your community and to use the municipal right-of-ways as well for delivering natural gas to your customers. Uh, you agree not to provide that to any other provider. And then we agree to bear full responsibility of that natural gas system, ensuring that we deliver services in, in uh, accordance with our uh, uh, terms and conditions and providing that service to our customers. Franchise fee is uh, a fee that uh, we charge to your customers and, and collect on your behalf and return back to, uh, to return back to the community. So the current fee, as was discussed, is 15%. Every year there is an opportunity to adjust that fee. So when you're in agreement, you can adjust it every year. And then when you renew an agreement, you can also adjust that. And the fee can be up to 35%. Uh, and as I said, that is collected from only your uh, members in the community and return to, to yourself. So I guess uh, as we talk, there's there's three things that uh, the council will, uh, that is that are left blank in the template agreement. So franchise fee is one of them. So if you decide to stick at the 15%, the term is one of them. So 10 to 20, and then uh, we'll get to the, the next one here. So the, the uh, Agreement also has provisions for, it outlines our core services, so Schedule A, if you look in that book, is found in there, what we provide. And, uh, and really what it is is to, to deliver gas to, to customers. We will provide service to any service lot within, uh, within your boundaries, so if you're bringing water and sewer to any property, we will bring gas to that property. And the only cost uh, to that customer is the cost of the service line, not the cost of ex extending the main. Uh, also providing that 24 hour emergency services, uh, as well as all the other services you guys are used to, to seeing, uh, those are listed in our Schedule A. There is another schedule in there, Schedule B, if the town requests extra services that are not part of that agreement, those could be added in. Let's say the town decided you wanted five employees stationed in Carston, we would put that in Schedule B. But anything we put in Schedule B is then collected from only the customers within that boundary as well, so within the, the town of Carston. So again, not something we use too often. It help me to understand that if if we requested an, another employee to get better service, if we find that there's, the service isn't good enough, would then that fee to hire that person be added on to the rate of the bill on the bill to collect to to be able to pay for that extra person? Yeah. So if 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 you if you were asking because you were finding that the service wasn't good enough then I think we would open up discussions to figure out why it's not good enough and, and try to deliver that, that level of service that, mm -hmm. that we have delivered in the past. Um, so I think there'd be lots of discussions before then. If yeah. we got to a point where we thought we were delivering
good enough service and the town wanted better service um, or something beyond what they were used to seeing, um, then that's, a, that's the point where uh, we would be utilizing Schedule B. So it would be asking for service beyond what the normal community receives. That would be an extra cost to the That would be an customer. extra cost, yeah. But, but I hope we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be at the point where you wanted a baseline service that we weren't providing. It yeah. would be you wanted you know, the platinum service right. um, where we're providing that baseline yeah. service. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it would, it would be. Thank you. So municipal taxes, there's a couple different op options with municipal taxes. Um, and I think uh, Jeff has a document that he's going to pass around or has passed around for discussion that compares the cost of the uh, South communities as far as franchise fees. And uh, you'll see some different things in there. Some say A and some say A and P. And that has to do with municipal taxes. So we have to pay municipal taxes. We're, we definitely are aware of that. But there's two ways that that can happen. We can receive an assessment and we pay it. And again, those, those costs are collected from just uh, Karsten customers. Or you can choose to uh, use a portion of that franchise fee to cover those taxes. And so when you look at uh, those rates, some of them are blended, because you'll see some of them are above that 35% ceiling, because they have a 35% franchise fee, and they charge uh, property taxes to, to, to us. And so they, in essence, get a little bit above that 35. Some communities decide to put it all together and only charge a franchise fee, and, uh, and don't assess taxes separately. So that's something that can be decided. Currently, we do. Uh, pay taxes separately, and, and we're fine doing that. Um, it's up to the community. Majority of our communities are that way. So the agreement does talk about what happens in, in the case of uh, uh, a sale of the natural gas distribution system. This is no change from the existing template, but I think it's worth reviewing. Um, so it, it does give the municipality the first uh, right of a few, uh, it gives the municipality the right to look at purchasing the distribution system when the term of the agreement expires. Uh, and so if the municipality requested that, then we would start negotiating price and, uh, and if we couldn't agree upon a price, then it'd go to the AUC for determining what, uh, what that price is. Obviously, we're not keen to sell our distribution system. We enjoy serving our customers and uh, want to continue to. But that is in the old agreement, that is in the new agreement. Um, the agreement does talk about uh, provisions for plans and equipment, making sure that we're providing you plans, showing our facility, as well as uh, training the, the fire, local fire, fire department, providing them uh, the necessary equipment to, to operate our facilities that, that they need. And we do that, do we do that training regularly? Uh, another part of the, the franchise agreement is uh, first right of refusal to purchase. So if, if, if ACO re, uh, received an offer to purchase the asset for the town of Karsten only, then the town of Karsten would have the first right of refusal to purchase it at, uh, with the same, the same deal. And then if the municipality exercises its rights to purchase it and then decides to sell within five years, then we would have first right of refusal to buy it back. Again, you know, we're, we don't have sales signs up on our franchises, so we we'll hope uh, this never comes to pass. But it is in there to protect the community, so uh, especially uh, some of our remote communities that um, that we may serve. Um, we uh, actually say in the agreement that we will, we will provide documentation to the plan to make sure we get approvals for any of the facilities that we install, and um, and that we continue to provide the information after the fact. Now, the third thing that is left blank in the agreement, this is, this is something that is new in the agreement that AUMA had, uh, had negotiated in, is a definition of when we will provide actual as-builds for work completed, uh, and de define that as major work. Uh, so we recommend um, anything over $100,000 will designate as major work, and, and we'll provide uh, the community with as-builds. If you want that to be smaller, that, that's fine. We do have as-builds for all our facilities. Um, I'm not sure you want to see every time you come in to do a service alteration, you, you probably don't want to see those as built, but uh, again, whatever the community wants, uh, you guys decide on what value to place under that major, major work. Probably one of the biggest benefits that this agreement has for the municipality is this cost of relocation. So we endeavor, we, we will um, move our facilities to accommodate municipal work when our facilities are in municipally owned property. 
um, provided that we're provided one year's notice uh, and, and, and that we work towards the least cost alternative. So if, if the municipality can spend $10,000 more on their project to save us a million, we'll cover that 10000 instead of us spending a million. Um, but we even we work sometimes with, within uh, reason when it's not a year's notice because we understand things happen. And I, and I think we've uh, had a pretty good working relationship in the past with that. Um, the one caveat is if the municipality is working as a land developer, um, then they would uh, pay the cost of relocations within that land. Actually, one thing, just to give you a real life example of that, we needed to relocate a line where we we're going to put the addition to the pool, and we didn't give very much notice to you guys that we're going ahead with this. So they said, pour over it, continue with construction, and when we can get there, we'll just cut the line off, abandon the old line, and reroute the new one. You know, so they're just saying, instead of us getting in there right away, we can't get there right now. And so pretty simple fix. We just simply pour the footing right over the gas line for now, and then they're just going to abandon it and reroute it when they can get here. So we've had pretty good yeah, pretty good communicate. And again, I think we called them two weeks ago, and we started in two weeks. So it was very much under a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We prefer that year, especially for the big project. <laughs> but, uh, but definitely, we work when we have less. And and we do have. We actually are, are uh, lucky to have a engineering group right out, right out of Lethbridge. We have a group of three there that support our area, and, and we try to get them out to, to meet with municipalities, especially when we know projects are happening. If you're doing a major uh, sewer or water upgrade. Um, we'll make sure that meeting happens so that they can identify where we're in conflict. Um, one of the other things in the agreement talks about this uh, distribution system expansion. And uh, I, I think I already said this, that we provide at no cost to the customers wherever you extend sewer and water uh, so that uh, it happens automatically. One of the things uh, certainly pertinent here, uh, I know we are sur surrounded by co-op territory, and we work, we work actually quite well with the co-op here. Uh, there is provisions in the agreement uh, in case of annexations. Mm -hmm. I think I skipped that. There you go. There we go. So if there is an annexation that happens that is less than 640 acres or 25% of the current size of the municipality, then uh, our franchise rights automatically go to that area. There's a formula that happens that we provide payment to the to the co-op if uh, if we're taking over any customers uh, to provide compensation that's uh, been approved um, and and it happens all the time for larger annexations the municipality has the right to um, to do what they want with that area now there have been some municipalities including the city city of, city of Edmonton who who have taken out that second point in the agreement uh, we certainly. Uh, don't support having a split franchise where you have two different gas distribution companies serving customers in the same area. Um, uh, it, it can lead to confusion with emergency response when you have gas orders or gas uh, hit lines on, on knowing who is to respond. And then also with uh, different levels of service that customers may be provided uh, as far as doing furnace inspections or, or things like that. So may not have any annexations over that size, so it may not be a, a, an issue, but uh, something that you guys can consider as well. We've already talked about this. Um, and then there's some, the other clauses in there, nothing that has changed, uh, just uh, uh, some of the communities had, had asked for that to be in there to, to be allowed to be an energy retailer, which is, is not an issue. We're not an energy retailer. Uh, there's a sister company that does that, but, but our customers are not affected by who they choose for energy uh, retailers. So that's, uh, that's stated right in there, the agreement. There's, a, there's some dispute mechanisms. In case there's a dispute, it outlines how we resolve those issues. And, uh, and, and it also talks to uh, service interruptions and uh, service reliability, uh, doing our best. And we actually have to report to our regulator on that uh, each quarter. And uh, certainly um, pride ourselves, I think, on that uh, service continuity. So I think all the, the clauses I wanted to talk about. So that's, uh, again, there's the, the three three sections in that agreement that are left blank that I think you guys will, will talk about a little bit later. Um, if there's any other questions, I'd love to answer them, but I appreciate uh, coming to, to speak with you guys today. Are there any other questions then for our delegation at this time? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
shoot it. Jeff, can you grab this tab? All right. With the uh, fabulous presentation from Atco Gas, I uh, neglected to uh, welcome the members of our gallery here, including uh, Channel 32, Corey McCarthy. And uh, we have a uh, Boy Scout here fulfilling a requirement for his merit badge in Civic something or other. <laughs> Good to see him. That or he's supporting the deputy mayor in his uh, first attempt at the chair here. So, <laughs> one of the two. Who would that be? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, who, who, who Oh, sorry, my, my son. <laughs> <laughs> also, my namesake. <laughs> That's my darling wife. All right, so we'll. Uh, Move on then in the agenda as we uh, adopt the minutes. We're looking for uh, if everybody reviewed the minutes there from our meeting, our CCW of February 7th, and we're looking for a motion to accept those. I will accept the minutes from February 7th. Thank you. CCW House McCreed. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? No, nope, carried. Thank you. All right, that brings us now to the, uh, to the bylaw. And policy recommendation. Now, this is uh, we're just looking for a recommendation on a proposed policy. Um, specifically, this is we, we discussed as a council in previous meetings the idea of giving non arm's length parties a potential discount on the use of town uh, equipment and services. So, specifically, if they're going to borrow our you know backhoe or loader or something, uh, there's a rate for that. But the question is, if these are already tax-paying citizens of the town, should they get a discount on that rate versus just the regular retail rate that we offer? So in the handout here, there's a couple of uh, scenarios that play out. But the uh, page of interest is the final page. If you look there where it says Unit 1 Machine Model, this is the CAT grader. Uh, what they've done, Hawken has taken some time to break this out for Jeff. Uh, he's done a fantastic job of showing the depreciation costs, et cetera, the labor. And as you come down to the very bottom here, you'll notice the fi fixed cost is $50. There's another 63 in variable costs, and it gives the breakdown of what that is. So then you have the fixed plus the variable at uh, 114, 5% overhead, and then the operator cost. So the cost to the person would be about 169, uh, 160. So this is very comparable to uh, what they would get out on the market available here in town. And so then the question is, if we could discount this, where would we discount that? And uh, Jeff has a couple suggestions. Would you be willing to speak on this? And, sure, I'm just uh, jumping into it here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah you're fine. I, I caught you off guard. Uh, we're just looking at maybe the thought object depreciation yeah. and the yeah. labor was yeah. where you thought those two areas would be yeah. specifically. So, so sorry not to be redundant if, if you mentioned this, but when we sat down to really analyze where we could do a lesser rate for our residents, we found our total true costs are almost exactly what our posted rate is. However, we're capturing depreciation and we're capturing labor, which is already accounted for. Now it offsets those labor costs, which is always a good thing, but where we get into this philosophical debate internally is where we're charging depreciation and we're charging labor to the residents who via taxes have really covered those two things. So is it reasonable to, to charge it when they need it? And, and one thing to be clear, we don't intend to work for people because we're the low cost provider. That's not the intent of the policy. The intent of the policy is when we do work that we have to do in the roads and on utility connections for people, should we be charging them the, the, the market rate? Or because, frankly, they were the, the ones that financed it in some form in the first place, should we look at relaxing those rates to give them the benefit. Again, only in certain circumstances. It would not be our intent to be the, the cost provider, low cost provider. Has there been somebody request this? Is that why yeah. this is coming to us? Yeah, this has come up a number of times. Um, mm -hmm. In your background, or I, the very first two documents are two examples of that. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind if I elaborate please, on those. Please. Um, so the first one is uh, 256 4th Avenue. Now this was um, just west of the seminary building. Uh, a lady who's lived in the community for about 30 years. And this actually is what spurred on our urban renewal change. So it was a new house put on old clay tile sewer line. The clay tile failed. It collapsed all under the road. Okay, So everything under the street, curb and gutter collapsed. 
So we went in and replaced it because it was connected to the main and it was in the road. So we don't normally allow private sector to do that for us. So our guys went and do it. And we build that resident, the, the road builder's rates, our posted policy rates. And so the bill is about $2,000, roughly. Now, the, the son of the lady living there has been excellent. He just came in and said, hey, we'll pay it if that's what we need to do. But wouldn't it be reasonable that, you know, my mother's paid taxes on that home and in Cardston for 30 years and, and she's, you know, she's lived there and, and helped buy the machinery and, you know, and all that stuff. Is it, is it reasonable that she would have a bit of a different rate? So that was one example. And the other one and the second one was a case on the East Hill where um, a, a, a lady owned a, her house and the next one to her is a rental and they had sewer troubles. And we found that both homes were coming into the one line and then going to the main. And so we went in and separated the lines and connect them both individually into the main. So again, it's work we would not allow the private sector to do on our behalf. And that was $5,000 on those rates. So we use this one as another talking point to say, is it reasonable that, should they pay that rate? And maybe the answer is they should. Or do we want to look at where they didn't have a choice to go to market? We didn't allow them to go, you know, get their cousin who would have done it on the cheap, you know. We didn't allow it. Do we, do we look at our rates? Is that reasonable? Uh, yeah, go ahead. The other, other question that I have, if these rates that you're showing here are our actual costs, why would we discount them? If those are our actual yeah. costs. Because in those costs are a couple of soft costs that potentially we would not be at a we would not be negatively impacted financially to reduce, like depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, mm -hmm. and labor, which we tax for and receive that revenue via taxes. Okay. okay. Personally, I really think the debate is an interesting one because if I already pay taxes and now I'm not allowed to hire somebody outside from the town, then I think there is a good point to be made mm -hmm. for a lesser rate that would take in consideration the depreciation and the labor which people are already paying taxes for. And if we cannot have other workers come, we're not competing with anybody else, therefore we're not taking anybody else's job, it's a town. So I would feel that in that case, there is a point that we should maybe look at it a little bit more carefully. I, I think one of the key points that the mayor made there was that it's not competing with private business. Uh, it's not a case of low cost provider you know, we're, we're being the lowest cost there. It's right. we're not giving an opportunity for anybody or to no be this. This is not a competitive situation where any other business can be in there. So I, I would be in general terms supportive of a, a policy that maybe didn't take into account those two areas of depreciation and labor. Okay. I think that's the, the two yeah. areas that there's some room to move there. Now my understanding is the administration is not prepared at this time to propose a uh, kind of a metric for this. They're looking for recommendations, suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thought was rather than discount all of depreciation, maybe a percentage of depreciation, and the same with labor, rather than discounting all the labor, maybe a percentage of the labor. So uh, if, we, if we think that's worth looking into, we're gonna entertain a recommendation to refer back to administration to come with a couple of suggestions. Uh, is that correct? Is that yeah. if, if council's comfortable with the principle of discounting the depreciation and labor, then we'll build the formulas, the rates based on that. We just, we beat it around, we drafted a couple of things, and um, I just wanted to be comfortable before we proceeded that there were, the council was okay with with those two items being potentially discounted, yes. Councilor. So I'm, I'm prepared to move that recommendation that uh, we recommend the council, or that the administration come back to council with a, uh, a formula for doing that for us to discuss. Excellent. Any thoughts on that recommendation? I have just one, and that is that uh, maybe with that rec the, that data, Jeff, um, if you could hit us with some kind of a price point or dollar amount where it might affect our budget to this to the tune of thirty grand a year or one hundred and eighty grand a year, so that we kind of know what we're getting ourselves into. 
So just so I'm clear, are you talking maybe like an opportunity cost to say, on the average, we do this much a year. Yeah, right. Here's what we would be charging right. here under this policy. If we do yes, a okay. discount of blah, that's sure. going to cost us blah. Yeah. Okay. You know, in, in so one other thing, I'm just looking at this cost in here and the rate. So our actual looks like the total cost per hour is 159.95, and then we've got a custom work policy rate another nine bucks on yeah. top of that. Yeah. Right. So there's a little bit of room right in there. there. Right. Yeah. All right. If there's no other thoughts on that, we'll vote on the recommendation of Councilor Marcus. Did you get that, Joe? Got it. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Good. Any opposed? No. Carried. Fantastic. Thank you. So we'll move now into other business, uh, 7A, which uh, you have an example of that uh, uh, here. There's also a bit in the uh, backgrounder. And so just to give you a little update on that, the Remington uh, Carriage Museum has spoken with the Friends of the Remington Society, and they have offered their support in the party in the park normally done on July 1st. Uh, they've talked to the Canada 150 committee who is in favor of moving the party in the park over to the Remington this year. Uh, before we move forward with any of those plans though, we wanted to bring it to council and uh, find out if there were any objections to, uh, to that. We'd of course still be doing the fireworks that evening at Lions Park, but the party itself would move over to the Remington. The, par uh, the museum will be open that day for free, free admission all day. We're hoping to attract quite a few people. There's uh, quite a bit of marketing dollars maybe being tapped into for this, and we're hoping to attract a couple of thousand people if we can, if everything goes well. The theme of the party, in addition to the normal party in the park, which, if you recall, involves bouncy houses and those little uh, sumo balloons, right? <laughs> and so now to this, because it's Canada Day, we want to add just a gazillion other balloons, maybe a hot air balloon we're going to look into. Uh, we're going to release biodegradable balloons into the atmosphere and have a competition that way. We're going to throw water balloons around and pick those up afterwards. And it's going to be like a big balloon and then cake, big old birthday cake celebration. There'll be a cake competition. Then we're going to cut those cakes and eat them. Everybody gets free cake and balloons. And uh, it's going to be fun, fun, party, party. Um, question. I like this idea, uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> in the fact that every year we've struggled with party in the park, you know, the July 1st party in the park. We've struggled with that. Now we've got a venue that's set up to do it. And, and I'm prepared to make a motion that we proceed with this. Okay. Um, before we get to that, is this something that they're prepared, they want to do on a yearly, annual basis? Yeah, that I don't know yet. Um, we visited with them about this year. The friends are excited and on side, of course, we'll financially support it as we would any group that would put it on for us. Yeah. But I don't have any long-term commitment at this point. Yeah, it, <coughs> and I guess that's, I don't want to get Councilor Bangry too excited. <laughs> no, but by, by the same token. Yeah, uh, maybe it gives them a rest. I think that if, it, if it's successful, they'll very seriously look they at may. it. They may. Right. Yeah, because of the involvement and the involvement people moving through their museum. Well, exactly. It gives them some numbers, too. Exactly. You know. One thing, I don't know that we need a motion on it. If there's just no objections, there's we can no go ahead with the proceed. planning yeah. accordingly. As you can see here, uh, we counted 150 hours, and that's about 6.25 days. That's, so yeah. That's it's, uh, it works out to be a full week, and then we're going to ask the, uh, the different service clubs and organizations in town to kind of take on maybe one or more of these activities and try to fill that week with something fun uh, to <coughs> celebrate Canada 150. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the great benefits of doing this is, uh, as many of you know, over the years, we've been a little protective of the football field down there. Uh, this would really help to keep some of that hard traffic off of it. So, yeah. so I guess I'm wondering, is this a kind of a combination of your committee that you've been involved in? And, there, and there's going to be, uh, per chance, a, there's going to be a recommendation for the, the possibility of an ad hoc ECDEV uh, committee, joint ECDEV mm -hmm. committee, to work on a partnership mm -hmm. with uh, Remington and some other things, Chamber. Um, but we'll, we'll hear more on that later. So, yeah. The other question is, the group that's been doing it in the past, it was the... The last two years, years I think. The Friends. Christmas. Christmas. Well, the, 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 the light people. Used to be 
by they weren't prepared to commit to this year. this year. Yeah. And so, so that means that there wouldn't be anybody coming forward to do it then. Not that I'm aware of. No, you're aware of currently. So this is kind of a perfect yeah. opportunity yeah. here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So if there are no objections, then uh, the committee will keep working on that and we'll give you uh, more details as that comes out. This, of course, is a draft, and if anything jumps out at you that you want to help participate in, keep that in mind and we'll inform someone on the committee, namely me. Uh, yes, Mayor. I, I want to commend you for all the work you're doing with that. I know when the Canada 150th celebration was brought forward, you volunteered, or I volunteered, you were not know which way it went. <laughs> And I appreciate you having done that much work. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll be there to help if you need help. Excellent. I see one area of concern. Yeah, only. Jump in there. The family potluck dinner. In the past, we've always had issues with the uh, Department of Health. Yeah. I mean, we have work parties and everything, and it's not an issue. This is a, this is a talented thing. We could have community. We could have a lot of people there. Right. So yeah. there is a liability. Yeah, I think issue on that, on that particular issue, if they were going to open it up to maybe one of the churches or nonprofits mm -hmm. to do it not a, as an official town activity, that would just be available mm -hmm. and maybe hosted at the you know one of the churches or something. Mm -hmm. So we'll but, we'll hear back on that. Yeah. But you had a good point. You're right. Yeah, yeah that that's that one might not make it on the grant application. Well, I was, I was just a little concerned because when we had the flooding, I remember yeah. up in oh, yeah. up in High River, they, they came in and shut them right yeah, down. Commercial they kitchen. Went to Calgary and Mary Nancy told them to take a hike and they fed them anyway, right? So are you prepared to tell them to take a hike and feed the people? I think we have to be cautious. Yes, we do. I'm because just being a little facetious. Yeah. Yeah. Cautious would be the right way to move yeah. on that one. Yeah, Mountain that. View has a commercial license on their kitchen. And Pardon me? Mountain View has a commercial license for their committee. Do they? And so they can do it. Uh, there are other groups, in, there are other groups in town that have that commercial mm -hmm. license. For example, the, um, the Legion. The Legion has it. The so, Red Kitchen. The, and yeah. so there are quite a few areas mm -hmm. where you have an industrial kitchen where you could do work. Yeah. Jeff? Not to belabor this point, but. Alberta Health doesn't get too concerned about our pancake breakfast, and I don't think they get too concerned here. Either. Yeah, well, that's good. <clears throat> Just throwing it out there. Oh, right. I appreciate it. It has to be addressed. Yeah, yeah it sure. definitely was uh, was yeah. discussed. So, I mean, there's Thank some that. item that would be best not to be brought, like rice, if it's not at a proper temperature, mm -hmm. poisoning. Right, right. So fantastic. Now, uh, another similar activity, but later in the year. This one I think is in August. Uh, we have Miss Liz Woodruff is coming to town to host a mud run, and uh, she is asking uh, here in your background information. Uh, she's asking the town for a little bit of uh, elbow grease, not any financial contribution, um, but uh, the, the, all very reasonable. The one item of concern maybe that arose were these mud pits. Now, a mud run isn't fun without a mud pit. So this is kind of a, this is an important segment. Um, talking about, you know, how big are these? Is it like 100 by 100 or is it, uh, and she said, oh no, like a 20 by 20 or even a 10 by 30 long mud pit mm -hmm. maybe would do the job. The question though is, uh, the intention is that this would become an annual event. And so uh, it would be the responsibility of our town, Parks and Rec, to create the mud pit, and then after the event, kind of remediate the mud pit and uh, claim it back, and then the next year, mud pit again. So uh, for those of you aware, we do have our mud pit up at the uh, Ag Dome, mm -hmm. and that is just left as a mud pit all year round. And it, yeah, so, so there were some thoughts about some environmental concerns being down by the creek, if there'd be mud runoff, maybe in a big rain. Um, what would Alberta Environment say to this? Is there a concern? Is there liability? These are all things that uh, we'd be looking at. Yeah, Councillor? I think, I think we ask uh, Mrs. Woodruff to, to move, direct it up to that mud pit that's already established there, mm. uh, and go for it. 
Well, okay, if I may, I don't know if that would fit though. Her, uh, her run direction wants to come right down into Lions Park. So she's going to run them right into the volleyball sand pit and all right So where there. does she want these mud pits then? Right down oh, by no, the trees. She's probably just at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, know, after the bridge. Well, she's, she's kind side. of done going up the, up the, the you know, the, the, the carriage. You know, they're down by the yeah. creek, there's the, 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 the walking trail, the paved walking trail, and there's the gravel the carriage trail. And uh, what I saw was that she wants to go up one, one, maybe the, 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 you know, the, the carriage trail and then back down the, you know, the paved jogging trail basically with, with the route. Uh, so, you know, the possibility for the, the mud pits would probably be just over next to the hill, you know, next to, the, next to that uh, jogging trail. Uh, Down bridge, below Bill Dawson's house. Or well, below Bill Dawson's house or below my house. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's some places in there that could be could work that, that would probably work but you know that but I think they would they shouldn't be left mud pits I think they should be uh, you know they could be made mud pits and then uh, you know replanted that that would be my suggestion okay you say you you say replanted you mean reseeded yeah, right? yeah, yeah, do you there. think there would be a growth oh yeah yeah. Before the foreign years? For another year? Well, oh, you mean you, 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 you're you wondering if it would so grow either. back with, if they had it every year? Yeah, yeah no. I don't know. I don't think so. The no. ones that the egg don't no, my, uh, grow over. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, we get maybe some good dandelions in there. Okay. <laughs> dandelions we can grow. Yeah, we can yeah. grow. <laughs> that is something I'm trying to understand. Um, the first year, I can see that this is not going to make money for the person who's trying to operate it. Right. There is no doubt in my mind, there's no money there. But if I understand properly, that is to become a business venture. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to understand is how do we deal with the notion of a business venture that could make a fairly good money as entertainment. I, I, I hope so anyways. And then uh, for the taxpayer to be charged for the cost of doing the mud pit, the reclaiming of it, and the fencing, the bathrooms, and all that stuff. If it's a business in time, Shouldn't those costs not be absorbed somewhat, somewhat, by the business operator, if there is money to be made? I, I'm just trying to put that all in my mind, trying to understand a little bit. There is also a possibility, I would imagine, of the town contributing towards an initiative, if we want to call it uh, an active kind of enterprise, something that the town could help with for three years. But after that, a little bit like the run to Waterton that yeah. we used to do. But then afterwards, if it's a if it's a successful venture, shouldn't then the costs be absorbed by the business? More responsibility to the business. Councilor Mayor? I look at this at a different angle. We, all, we, we are trying to invite people into our community. If this brings in 500 people to our community, they're going to be spending money in our businesses, in our restaurants, in our drive-ins, and, and grocery stores and so forth, at the campground. And, and sure, the first year is, is a test run, but this, this kind of stuff is going all over the province. I mean, these these are very popular. It's all over Canada and the United and, States. And they bring a lot of people to a community. And I think we need to look at that situation, too. Yeah, Councilor. I was going to just mention, I don't know if the mayor understands also that, uh, even though it's my daughter, of course, I have no financial connection to this at all. But her her aim is to cost, to share the profits with as a charitable donation to an uneedy group here in town, whether it be the shelter, the women's shelter or the reserve, or whether it be to a, a group in town. Uh, you know, it could be a sizable donation to, you know, uh, 
couple thousand dollars or so. So it's not just a business. It, yeah, I mean, anybody who's going to do this is going to make money. Well, and I don't think it's a bad thing to make money. But Absolutely. the fact is she wants to share that to help different groups and organizations on it each time she does it. Then they will share the benefits of that. Any thoughts, uh, Councilor? Uh, just a couple things. I, I spoke with Mrs. Woodruff this afternoon just for clarification on a couple things, anticipating some, some questions. Um, she did approach a uh, local service club to see about helping with volunteer coordination. That didn't happen. They just couldn't bring people together that time of year, I don't think. But just what Councilor Barnes said, her intention is that when it becomes profitable, they'd like to see some things go back into the community. And, and she asked if we wanted to look at a project like a, a top lot or something that she could use as a way to get people to participate because there'd be some benevolent proceeds, which I think is a good thing. The other thing I suggested to her is maybe it would be reasonable to apply for some opportunities initiative funding. So that graduated funding for events, this is exactly what it's intended for. That's the purpose, events that are going to go year after year that attract people to town. And I said my concern is, and it's a good concern to have, that if you're successful right away, you may be at a profitable point, but still receiving opportunities initiative money. And she assured me that she would be um, very much willing to return any unused portion of opportunities initiative to the town on every year, on a year-to-year -year basis. Well, and that exists with all opportunities, grants that we give. It's yeah, a possibility yeah, that it could be profitable yeah. earlier. The, the only other thing I'll throw out, I, I, my biggest concern is the mud pits from an administrative point of view. I think from a regulatory point of view, we're okay. I talked to Bart about it, and he was going to poke around, but... As long as we don't allow a lot of runoff and silt and a big rain to go into the creek, we're probably okay. The remediation is always a concern. But the other thing is, on August 5th, our people are busy like crazy that day. That, that's a tough day to say we're going to have all of our guys to set up every barricade and snow fencing. That's a tough day to pull that together. We've got the parade. We've got mm -hmm. family ball tournament. We've got mayor's luncheon. So I, I have staff all over that are quite busy on that day so it's it's a tough day to say we can commit you know a hundred man hours it, it's just a tough one and that's why I thought maybe if she had some opportunities initiative money and could bring in the people she needed to do a lot of that legwork to be very frank it might just be the easier route for us um, to go along that line and see how it goes Jeff can you give me a sense of that opportunity uh, fund that we have yeah which I was talking about earlier, how much can a person that want to access that fund obtain? Is that 3000 the first year, 2000 1000 How does it work? There's not a cap. It's, uh, and if it picks up the network here, I'll tell you. Finding grant? Yeah, it's over three years. Mm -hmm. It declines. Uh, yeah, but I can I pull it remember. up here and tell you. So it's based on give me just two seconds I know this will come up soon um, <coughs> sorry one second here ops initiative right here so I just keep a table of the availability of funds so what oh, isn't committed so we've never capped an individual applicant but we only have fifty five hundred dollars annually in the fund Okay, all right, so that's a cap we yeah. have. So for 2017, for example, the senior pro rodeo has $1,800 coming to them and the bicycle rodeo has $500. Right. So there's 2300 of it that's committed, leaving $3,200 remaining for 2017. So I just keep a running total and, and keep an idea of what's, uh, what's going on there. So, and then next year there's 38 up because the rodeo gets 600 less and because everyone's graduated down, right? So th I did have a bit of a discussion about saying, instead of looking for, for my people, my staff to be doing all that, could she find some helpers for the day with the Opportunities Initiative money that would free up maybe a few things? I don't have any problem lending snow fence. Obviously, it's just sitting in piles on August 5th. It's, it's fine. But I told her if, if it was damaged or destroyed, then they need to compensate the town. We'd have to have an agreement that says if a bunch of this gets destroyed, you've got to go buy some rolls of snow fence. Okay. Things like that, right? And the other thing I told her, she needed a number of barricades. I said, if council supports this, I can't guarantee how many I have on August 5th. Mm. If 
if I have two blocks of Second Avenue dug open, we're not going to pull them off a closed road. It's just not reasonable to do that. And so I told her there's a bit of a risk there that I simply can't tell you you'll get a hundred barricades because I don't know. It'll depend. I would think actually we'll be done by then. We'll be done construction by then, but yeah. you just don't know. So I couldn't guarantee it. A question I have is regarding liability. How is liability for such an event yeah. of it? So she has to purchase specific oh, okay. event liability insurance with the town as an additional named insured. Mm -hmm. She knows that. She knew that before we talked. That wasn't an issue. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be taken care of. She knows that's a cost that she has to incur. One more question. Do we have a sense from uh, Ms. Uh, Wood Woodworth, Liz, how much would she require if she was to use the Opportunity Initiative? Uh, you, as will know, you will know that at the next council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer to it. Just in speaking to her, she said she was just preparing that request. Okay, I just wondered yeah. if she had a budget. She has a couple of loose ends in the budget. She's just trying to finalize before she gives us the request. All right, thank you. Yeah. We shall wait. Councilor. Jeff, I, I appreciate what you're saying about the Heritage Days weekend. But if we look at the Saturday morning, Everything is wound down by 12, 31 o'clock. I mean, our Main Street is basically dead, you know, uh, except the street cleaners going up and down. This event might keep that celebration ongoing. Yeah. The, the Ag Society is doing a lot of events that day, so they keep a lot of that going. And as far as my staffing, it's just important to remember they start about 4.35 in the in morning, the morning. That day. Yeah. Right, so they, they, they start quite early for breakfast and and bleachers on Main Street and then cleaning up that and then they prepare the fireworks and so there's a lot of those things going on. Um, certainly we would have some resources but they are a bit taxed that day. That's the only thing that, that yeah. just for consideration to, to throw out there. So it looks like we're looking for a recommendation to uh, encourage administration to continue with this. Uh, also any big red flags or or uh, opposition to the requests that have been made, uh, Councilor. Just, just clarifying again. I'm looking for the for the day. I, I I thought she said it was before or just before the Heritage Week, or is it? Is it? It's during. During the yeah, Heritage. She told me today it was August fifth. Oh, August. That's 5th. the current plan. Yeah. The, yeah. And which is, is that? What day is that? That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. That's, That's not Friday. our parade day though. Friday. That's Friday. That's yeah. a Friday. Friday. Oh, it's a Friday. Okay. Yeah, our parade day is the, the yeah, next. Yeah, she didn't six. want to do it on Friday. Friday. The well, August the 5th is Saturday. It is a Saturday. It is a Saturday. It is, yeah. Councilor? That's the week before. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it the week before the parade? Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it is. That's right. It's the parade. Is it the 12th? That's right. The parade will be the 12th. Oh, so it's the week before. So, so, so that helps. helps. So, so then the parade, the, the parade, and then the following week yeah. is the mini shows. Yeah, so okay. those are the three that Saturdays. Happens. So it's the Saturday before the parade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I was thinking the first weekend, but. You're right. Council. No, the, the, the parade is the after the Monday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to make a recommendation that uh, we ask our administration to work on this project on, on, on Mrs. Uh, Woodruff's behalf. Also, I'd like to have in that uh, back to council uh, what kind of money she's going to need for the grant. And I'd also like to ask her to walk that trail and maybe designate an area that she would like to see the mud pits in so that we can yeah. we can look at that area also. I've got one that might be in mind where it was partially a swamp anyway. It was already a swamp. Yeah. yeah. And it was always there. Yeah, and I talked to her about that one too. Yeah, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. look at that one. Good opportunity to reclaim something that needs to be reclaimed. Well, anyway. it's, it's always kind of been a bit of a, a, a slew there. Yeah. 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 I'll talk to you about well, that. Yeah. Sounds good. Money good. All right. Any more discussion on that recommendation? Uh, if hey, not, oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, and that money to come from the uh, opportunity initiatives? If applied for. Yeah, if applied for. Yeah. And, and she will be. I just don't have it yet. Right. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, my, my only other thought uh, from my perspective is that it, it looks like a good thing to do for, for the first year and see how it goes and maybe exactly. just let her know we're not committing to a long-term commitment. We want to see yeah. how that goes. Mm -hmm. And if we hated the mud pits and we had all kinds of headaches about it, 
maybe we reconsider, but certainly this first year it's worth a go in my opinion. So I, I was actually going to just say something very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to the motion by any stretch of the recommendation, uh, but there, I do have some concerns that as we're going through mm -hmm. this need to be addressed like that, like the, the for-profit nature of it, uh, those kinds of things, but I think it's valuable for us to continue that conversation towards working towards that. So. Good. All right. All in favor of Councilor Bangry's recommendation? Good. Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. That moves us to 7C on your agenda. This is the proposed franchise agreement with ATCO Gas. So we'll open it up to questions. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to ask administration if they could let us know what the changes in the franchise fees have been over the years. Or have we always had 15% as pretty well the base on which we worked? Yeah, and while he's getting ready, I just want to draw everyone's attention to this little physical handout bill that we've been given. Because comparing us to the other communities in we, the area. We no doubt low, but then it's also a way to Yeah, these costs yeah. are are directly passed on to the to residents. The customer. Of, of so the we customer. have to kind of be careful. So we have to be careful. Also you'll notice here with the side card says eighteen point nine. 3.9% of that is the taxes they pay That's on the right. infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. So they just add that to the 15% right. that's collected. And all of that is collected straight by the Cardston residents. Yeah. You know. By ACO. By ACO, yeah. yeah. So my understanding is we have not changed the franchise fee in a long time. I get a letter every year saying I have 45 days to give notification. Now, by every year, that means two years. But in my time, I get this letter every year and uh, <laughs> I haven't, now I haven't gone back over the old ones, but I don't think we've changed it for some time. Uh, if I may, just along those lines too, this contract allows us every year to continue yep. to change yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. No, we could change it to 35 next year, yep. and all they, they don't even care. They just ding our residents, yeah, and they're exactly. smiling. I mean, that is a, yeah, but the money comes back to, <laughs> right, to right. the town, yes. right? So it's take it from the customer, uh, collected by uh, ACO comes back to the town as franchise fees. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing that's an interesting in your on your electronic agenda 7C3, it gives you what the impact per year on a customer is yeah. depending on. So right now it's about seventy eight dollars a customer per year based on right. current prices, but thirty five percent goes up to one hundred eighty one. No, but so it gets significant. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. so. I, I think the, the biggest thing that we need to keep in mind here is, and we've had this discussion <coughs> dozens of times over the last few years, uh, my left pocket or my right pocket? Exactly right. Out of my pocket. Which pocket? And it's just another form of taxation that exactly. maybe exactly. we don't have to take the heat for because it gets blamed on ACO, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's, it's us making that decision for it. Right. Uh, let me come from the mayor and then over here. Yeah. I. I don't see personally the need to change a percentage. We fairly low uh, when we compare ourselves to many other towns. But what I need to know, do you feel that income, which is hundred and some of thousand, hundred eighty two or something other than uh, twenty eight right now? Hundred and twenty eight thousand a year. Mm. Is that a fair number? to go in our budget. Does that meet our needs? For, uh, well, I, I don't know exactly how to put it. No. It's a, it's a tax. Well, I think it's a different, difficult question to ask. It's a difficult question to answer. Exactly. It's it is. purely subjective. Uh, is it exactly sufficient? right. How much do you want? Is it a major line item in the budget? No, it's, it's not. I mean, we take in two and a half million in taxes, and this is 125 grand. Right. So is there so, any reason why we would want to increase it? Uh, that's my next question. Let me come over to Councillor Creed. Yeah, I just had a, had a question. I, I was thinking about asking them when they were here, but I thought you could probably answer just as well. Because when they talked about the taxes, and you're saying that the, the, the 18 includes the taxes, right. and they were, they were they, you know, on the slide was you know, talking about linear taxes. Mm -hmm. So is their, their taxation of their building and things, is that separate that they pay, or is that kind of included in their total? Taxes that just passed on. The building they're having done. <laughs> uh, no, they pay. Yeah, they pay that separate That's for many franchise tax. fees. They pass on. Mm -hmm. They're just, and I'm not sure why some communities choose not to tax them. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to go through the headache of it personally. I just reduce the franchise fee. Yeah. That's easy. 
But the, that tax um, is, is, is just the linear tax of the lines in the community? No, they would have assessment oh. tax. Oh, the, yeah, and that's what I'm wondering. Is, yeah. that, is that separate or is that kind of in Do you know, Jill? Included it's in all the... It's separate from the... It's separate from, from the, linear. the linear tax? Well, it should well, be. Linear, 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 linear tax, tax comes it's through as assessment and um, right. um, improvement. It's part of their improvement. They mm -hmm. have, and then they'll have land mm -hmm. on their building as well. So, okay. so the buildings is part of their linear assessment, including their underground infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, it's, it's, so it's all kind of combined together, basically. Yeah. Their, yeah. their 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 building is so it's all included in that yeah. tax. Okay. Um, Councilor Marcus. So the the first part is uh, even on that one there. Recognize that like all business taxes, the customer pays for it at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where it's coming from. Uh, as to whether $125,000 is significant in our budget or not, think about what we went through when we just had the the request back that was roughly about $120,000 hit overall to our budget uh, on the electrical issues. Mm -hmm. So it, it's significant mm -hmm. in that it's been budgeted. We've got this budget right. created. Without it, it's, it's a hole. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then it goes back to the taxpayer again. Yeah. Well, one way or the other, at the end of the day, the <laughs> taxpayer is paying the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one benefit I see to this approach is that those entities that aren't taxed otherwise would contribute to their fair share yeah. um, through, through this method here. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the mayor. Well, personally, uh, I would recommend that maybe even make a motion that we accept a 15% franchise fee in the next contract, uh, we need to decide the length of the contract. Is it 10 years, 20 years? Uh, you can go anywhere between 10 and 20 10 now. 20. We've we always have, been 10. We have done uh, and, 10. And there's no real appetite for ECHO to, to extend that other yeah. than the 10 seems to be working. So great. I could say for the next 10 years. For the next 10. So we're looking at a recommendation then to leave the rate at 15%. And with a 10-year, uh, and this is an annual rate yeah. renewal, yes. so next year we could raise it to 30, but for this year, uh, any other thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, just uh, not on the rates, but on the time period. Is there any advantage to us being a longer term as opposed to a shorter term? I was thinking the same question. I haven't seen it. It's not like we're purchasing anything from them so that we get a better rate over a longer term. So I so haven't seen that. The only thing on the shorter term is, in the event, and Did something happen? Let me conjure a purely hypothetical situation. In the event the gas co-op says, we want to take a stab at buying yeah. the utility within the town. Now, I don't think they're in a position to do that or it would make but sense for them. Know. They would have to wait for the expiry of that, and then the town has first right of refusal to buy the right. asset right. Um, based on evaluation that we would either have to agree or go to the AUC. Now, if you're 20 years, that opportunity is 20 years further. Away. And really, every 10 years having to redo a bylaw isn't a huge onerous task to go in 10-year increments, right? It's not a big deal. So it does give you some flexibility at the end of term if there was some significant ownership change you wanted to happen. If we suddenly got a whole bunch of money for the province and wanted to buy that into the <laughs> Do you have an in on that? <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's the only thing I've seen. It's pretty hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to ask for the public who is listening uh, that the only time I can make a motion is when I'm not sitting in a chair. <laughs> Someone questioned <laughs> my making a motion and I said if I'm not in a chair. Well, in this, in this case it's a recommendation of, uh, of a committee anyway, so right. yes. Uh, I think it's a motion. Okay. Yep. If I might, so by all means, uh, make a vote on your motion, but I think how you'll see that come to fruition is we would prepare the bylaw allowing the mayor and I to bind the municipality as per their list, and then you would pass first reading on that bylaw. So that's how we would bring this to you yeah, so after you make your recommendation. So the recommendation in this case is for administration to proceed using the term 10-year uh, yeah, rate 15%, yeah. unless further. Over yeah. 10 years. Over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And only over 10 years. And is there anything else you need in that recommendation? No, I'm, how it works is we do first reading. I send them a certified copy of first reading. They send it to the AUC for approval. It'll just be rubber stamped. Once the AUC sends it back saying it's okay, you pass the second and third reading. Excellent. 
Uh, Jill, you're okay on how that recommendation Oh, and, and I should also mention, sorry, I keep thinking of things sure. here. If you change the franchise fee, we need to advertise the other the readings. Right. But right. if you don't change it, we're not, we don't right. need to no, advertise the readings. Well, yeah. No public notice necessary. Yeah, we can just go through and get it done. And, and the AUC, if we're not changing the franchise fee, should just rubber stamp it and move on. Right. All right, if there's no further discussion, we'll go ahead and vote on the recommendation. Uh, all those in favor? Recommendation. Any opposed? All right, thank you. That carried. A break for a minute. A break for a moment. Are we uh, okay? Can it wait for one more item just to get through? We have 7B, yeah. the uh, Councilor Bangry's garbage contract, <laughs> was it? <laughs> thank you for adding yeah, that. Thank you. <laughs> my, my concern is, is last last uh, council meeting we got right into this garbage contract uh, and my concern is why are we interfering with a private contract we we have put a contract out there the contractor I don't know where this this uh, decision come from that we got involved in and how much he can take and and all that kind of stuff I mean he's a private contractor He's got a contract. If he's having problems with it, you know, uh, that's for him to clean up, not for us to clean up. Yeah. Well, if I, if I may, and then we'll, we'll hear from administration. My understanding is we have our garbage bylaws that we need to yeah. uh, enforce. Yeah. And so, but yeah, you want to speak to that, Jeff? I think, Councilor Ranger, to answer it, I think when we had our planning session, we were having some discussion around the imposition of the limits and how strictly that was being enforced. and. And I expressed a concern that I wasn't comfortable it was being enforced. Now, to your point, I could probably should just be making sure that's enforced without a motion to counsel, frankly. That would be my role. Um, but when we had all those recommendations coming out of the planning session, one of them that was made in that session was to have me speak with Darcy about making sure the bylaws were, and it would be good for us to review. So uh, I, I went back and forth on that one because I should just take care of it in my role. You're right in the fact it didn't need to come to council. It developed out of a conversation of council at the planning session and a recommendation was made. And the recommendation was just to consult with Darcy to see if there's any maybe yeah. a policy consideration yeah. that we and should look at. It, it may culminate in policy revision or at least recommendations to council. Okay, right. That may be how it culminates. Yeah. So thank you for pointing that just, out, Councilor. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, on the same, the same uh, topic as is there a is there a big problem here that Darcy come and say that we've got an issue here or has there been people you know come forward and saying you know we're he's not taking our bags he's leaving them because you know we've got sick bags out there instead of four I mean this may be the opposite yeah you know, and if, if I could mr. chairman I I think it I think the recommendation came we were just having this discussion of what yeah. we've observed yeah. There was a few of us that had observed that my neighbor had six bags out and he took them. So I think Darcy's trying to make sure, you know, keep the peace and do the right. job of making sure everything's collected, and that puts him in a tough spot. It puts him in a confrontational spot with the citizens when he doesn't pick it all up. Right. And where does it end up? Well, probably in a dumpster, probably in a ditch, probably not somewhere appropriate. Rolling down so the western I, road. Yeah, yeah. So the conversation was I should meet with him on that item and see where we can go with it. Yes, I was just going to say further to that uh, at the planning meeting, we discussed maybe Darcy should have some tags that he can sell to people. Yeah, just he does, you know, just yeah, and he does, and he, does. And, he does. and he needs to do it. That's his yeah. part of the deal, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and if, you know, I know there are people that don't like confrontation at all, <laughs> you know, but when you take on a contract that deals with a bylaw yeah. and policy, then yeah. he's got to do that part. But you know, I, I think also there are times when you know, people go away on holidays and, you know, their garbage isn't put out for two weeks and, and, and then, then they got an extra bag. You know, it's, it's hard for Darcy to have to come penalize the guy because he, he hasn't taken the other four, but, you know, eight bags for, for two weeks and now he's got one extra bag. I mean, there has to be some kind of leeway there for him too. You know, I don't think he should have a... Hard fast rule. Well, and that's why every citizen can come in and buy overage yep. tags, right? So they can put 20 out there if they want to come buy 16 yep. over tags. And, and, and that's, I that's did say also we need to educate, didn't yeah. I? Remember, we said we need to get it out on our Facebook page, we need to get it on our web page. 
educate no. the people so that they're aware of what's going on. No. So Darcy doesn't have to be taken no. flat. Yep. Uh, that that's my point that a hey, if if little old grandma Susie down the block forgets to put her garbage out one one week and then next week uh, she has family come home so she's cleaning her house and she has two extra bags plus the, the two that she forgot to put out but at the same token what happens when Darcy has a breakdown and he doesn't come to a business mm -hmm. which I take care of and there's a big uh, uh, stack of garbage in the in the garbage bin plus on the outside you know is that business going to be penalized for that non pickup yeah. so I think we we've got to be very careful how we handle our private contractors yeah. and we got to be careful with the bylaws that we make to that contractor I really think that administration is the right place to start to have a talk with Darcy if the bylaw needs to be revisited that's our privilege exactly but I think we won't know that on the, until that discussion is happening with our contractor and I think we need to leave it at that yeah that some personalities are better suited to conflict resolution on the side of the road so, <laughs> we have to kind of weigh that as well. So, thank you, uh, Jeff, for all your work in that. And uh, does that satisfy you, Councilor? Yes, yeah. it does. All right. Uh, it looks like we might uh, be entertaining a motion to have a quick motion recess. Motion to have a recess for five minutes. Any uh, opposed there? So, all in favor of a five-minute recess? Thank you. We will pick this up.